Good evening, you're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Harminder Singh. And I'm Raymond Young. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Thai authorities searching for suspect in deadly bombing that killed two Hong Kong tourists. Tianjin mourns the death of those killed in last week's explosion as authorities detain those responsible. And Lun Chung Ying repeats call to drop hands off approach to the economy. Thai authorities are hunting for a suspect in last night's bombing in Bangkok, which killed at least 22 people, including nine tourists. The government has vowed to punish those responsible, calling the attack the worst in the country's history. Arthur Killer reports. A day after a devastating blast killed over 20 people, including foreigners, near a popular shrine in the Thai capital, more footage was released capturing the explosion. This video shot by a Chinese tourist captured the moment the blast struck, 100 meters away. Another video from a dashboard camera also captured the explosion. Oh. Thai Prime Minister Prayo Chan Ocha revealed this afternoon that authorities were looking for a suspect captured by a security camera near the site. The Prime Minister stressed more investigations needed to be done. In a televised statement, he later insisted foreigners would be safe in the country and that those behind the attack would be brought to justice. He called the attack the worst in the country's history. Police later released pictures and footage of the suspect, who was wearing a yellow shirt and was seen putting down a backpack he had been carrying. Families of those killed in the blast were waiting to collect the bodies of their loved ones at a forensic hospital in the capital. Among the dead were Chinese nationals, including Hong Kong residents, Malaysians and Filipinos, with scores of others wounded. The Irrawan Shrine is located on a busy corner near shopping centers and hotels and is a major attraction for many overseas visitors. The blast has tourists on edge. Being a first-time tourist, it is... I'm not sure I would have come if this would have happened before I booked my ticket, especially since... But now that I'm here, there's no reason for me to not go on living, even though it's something that you just have to deal with. But travelers passing through plan to continue their trips. We are probably a little bit scared, but I think we are just here for three days, something like that, and then we will go to Bali, so hopefully we'll be fine. Washington says more information was still needed to determine who was behind the attack and what their motives were. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott condemned the attack and offered his condolences. Uh, all Australians are very, very sad. Uh, we abhor this atrocity and we extend our sympathies and our condolences to the government and the people of Thailand. With tensions already high in the country, police said a small explosive was thrown from a bridge over a river, but no one was injured. The road junction where the deadly blast occurred was reopened this afternoon. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. The government has issued a red travel alert for Bangkok after the deadly bombing, which killed two women from Hong Kong and injured several others. Immigration and medical workers have been sent to Bangkok to provide assistance. Marcus Chi reports. In the wake of the deadly explosion near Erewhon Shrine in Bangkok, Staff from the Immigration Department and Hospital Authority have flown to the Thai capital to provide residents with assistance. The Immigration Department has sent six officers to the city and urged those seeking help to call the 24-hour hotline 852-1868. The Hospital Authority has also sent a team of three, including mental health professionals. Since the team consists of a clinical psychologist and a senior counsellor, we would like to give uh, psychological support to the bereavement uh, relative if the, uh, for the uh, deceased. But for the patients, we would like to see whether we can help them in any way, be it translation or to help them psychologically or to assess any need to transport them back to Hong Kong. The Security Bureau has issued a red outbound travel alert for Bangkok and retained the Amber Alert for the rest of Thailand. At the same time, 18 major travel agents have decided to cancel all Bangkok tours from this afternoon until the end of this month, around 200 in total. Yeah, I think the, the agent will try their very best to minimize the damage for, from the passenger, such as they will negotiate with airlines 
with the hotel's concern to minimize their, their damage. And uh, I, I think that, of course, uh, in case, uh, in some cases, I think definitely airline will impose some penalty charge. Tung estimates that there are still thousands of Hong Kong tourists in Thailand and urged them to avoid crowded areas. He also believes the government should issue a black alert instead, although he respects the Security Bureau's judgment. Whenever there's a red travel alert, there are disputes between passenger and agent. Because the agent is saying that uh, you know, they have to cancel the tour and then the passenger claim that uh, it's a red travel alert, they don't want to travel. And uh, somehow, uh, because the red travel alert doesn't mean that everything will be refunded accordingly. But in case it's a bread traveler, it's another story. Uh, I think uh, uh, the agent can do it very smoothly without any dispute with the passenger. Chief Executive Leung Chan Yang expressed his condolences to the victims and urged the Thai government to investigate the cause of the explosion. Marcus Chi, ATV News. A former Tianjin vice mayor has been detained as investigators continue to hunt down those responsible for the massive explosions in the city last week. Thousands of officials, firefighters and locals mourn the victims in ceremonies today. A moment of silence was held at the local park this morning in Binhai New area, where the blasts occurred. Led by Public Security Minister Guo Shengkun and Tianjin Mayor Huang Xingguo, they paid tribute to the victims killed in the explosions exactly one week ago. According to Chinese tradition, people mourn the dead on the seventh day of their death. Hundreds of soldiers, firefighters and police officers held separate memorials at different locations near the sea. Cargo ships docked at nearby Tianjin port also sounded their horns in grief. As the city mourned the dead and injured, state officials ramped up their efforts in finding out what and who was to blame for the disaster. It's now confirmed that Yang Zhongliang, who has the country's work safety agency, was detained for suspected serious disciplinary violations. The officials speak for corruption. Yang was Tianjin's vice mayor for over a decade, although it's not known if his arrest was linked to the blasts. This comes after two officials in charge of Binhai District are under investigation, while 10 members of Reihai Logistics, the operator of the warehouse involved, have also been detained. But the local government has a lot more to deal with, such as these angry residents whose homes were destroyed in the blasts. They accuse authorities of ignoring their plight and are demanding compensation. Others, meanwhile, return to their homes to pick up their personal belongings under the escort of armed police forces. But with rain expected in the following days, rescue efforts will be hampered, as there are fears bad weather may trigger more explosions at the site, where hundreds of tons of toxic chemicals still reside. Chief Executive Lin Xinying says the government's hands-off economic policy is outdated. He said change is needed in the face of growing global competition. Karin Young reports. Speaking before his weekly Executive Council meeting, Chief Executive Leung Chen Yang repeated his call for the government to abandon its hands-off approach to the economy. Lang said the active non-intervention free market policy is outdated, as both the international and regional business environments have become more competitive. Lang added that the government will continue to be the super connector between the mainland and the world, saying cooperation with mainland special economic zones such as Tianhai, Nansha and Hengqing in the Pearl River Delta will allow the government to take an appropriately proactive role. In an interview with the official Xinhua News Agency last week, Lang made similar comments on the city's free market policy and said the government must take the lead, especially in innovation and technology, in the face of increasingly intense global competition. But Liberal Party Chairman Felix Chung, who is against the abandonment of the hands-off economic policy, warned that this move could threaten Hong Kong's status as the world's freest economy. Karen Yang, ATV News. Four people have been arrested for providing false trade descriptions for their wedding services. Customs says the two companies involved are run by the same people. Karenia reports. The Customs and Excise Department has arrested one man and three women for violating the trade descriptions ordinance after providing customers with wedding services that did not match what the customers were promised. The two complaints involved a wedding cocktail reception valued at $50,000 and a Chinese wedding banquet valued at $240,000. 
In the case of the wedding banquet, the food was to be prepared by a chef at the fanu. But after paying a deposit, the customer was told food would be provided by catering service, as the fanu did not allow cooking on site. Hui Wai Ming, the head of a customs task force dealing with unfair trade practices, refuted that the two companies involved were operated by the same group of people. Hui reminded wedding couples to be very careful when they purchase such services. Uh, first, uh, before purchasing the, the, the service, I suggest the couples to do uh, some you know, in-depth research uh, on the service and also the service uh, provider. They may consider choosing some uh, reputable service providers. And during the process, they have to pay uh, special attention to the detail of the contract. If the salesperson offer any uh, verbal permits, they have to make sure that there's no um, uh, contra contradiction between the written one and the, and the, and the, and the verbal ones. And it's also a good practice you know, to record the verbal premises, like in sound recording or in writings. The disclosure of the arrest comes after the Consumer Council reported yesterday they had received 31 complaints the first half of this year on wedding services. But it is not known if the customs cases are included in the Consumer Watchdog's reports. Hui said the customs has also looked into five other cases violating the trade descriptions ordinance. Advisory letters were sent to two companies, but no legal action could be taken against the other three due to a lack of evidence. Karen Yang, ATV News. Turning overseas, firefighters are still struggling to tackle several fires across the U.S., which have forced tens of thousands of residents to flee their homes. And an Indonesian search team has recovered all 54 bodies and the black box from the crash site of a plane which went down on Sunday. Arthur Akila reports. A search team arrived in a forested remote area in Papua province, where a Trigana air flight crashed two days ago. The search and rescue agency said the team had reached the site on foot after an entire day of trekking through difficult terrain. Operations Director Hieronymus Guru revealed there were no survivors and that all 54 bodies were found by this afternoon. As anxious family members waited to identify the bodies of their loved ones, the agency confirmed that it had located the plane's black box and would hand it to the National Transportation Safety Committee. There were 49 passengers and five crew on the short-haul flight, all of them Indonesian nationals. Wildfires have continued to burn across the U.S., with blazes in the mountains of Oregon, charring over a million acres. More than 29,000 civilian and fire personnel have been deployed, with 108 homes destroyed in Oregon, Idaho, and Washington since Friday. Meanwhile, a major blaze in the city of Shalan in Washington jumped in size to cover 60,000 acres. It's just tricky country, because wherever you go, once you get to you think you're at a spot where you're looking good, then all of a sudden the ground drops away, goes into a canyon, then shoots up the other side, uh, and there's no road access to get in there. So somehow we have to figure out a way to to bring fire with us to get across that so that it doesn't keep coming down the canyons. We want to get people back to their homes as quick as we can and get these evacuation levels lowered, but we also want to do it safely. We don't want to lower it and then have the fire do something and have people back in there and, and be you know, scrambling to get people back out. Firefighters said weather conditions had improved with lower temperatures and winds. The U.S. State Department says more than 300 emails from the private account of Democratic U.S. presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton have been flagged for further review by intelligence analysts, according to a federal court filing. They come from a sample of about 20 percent of some 30,000 emails, which were screened to determine if they contained classified information before they could be released to the public. The department also acknowledged that it couldn't process at least 15 percent of the emails by the end of last month, as ordered by a court judge, blaming a new review process for it falling short at 12 percent. The scandal has dogged Clinton's presidential bid as it raises concerns that she sidestepped government rules requiring official email addresses be used so official records can be kept while she was Secretary of State. Clinton has denied sending any classified information from her private email account while she was in the post. Arthur Akiola, ATV News.